Adventures of Frank Race, starring Tom Collins. The war changed many things, the face of the earth and the people on it. Before the war, Frank Race worked as an attorney, but he traded his law books for the cloak and dagger of the OSS. When it was over, his former life was over, too. Adventure had become his business. The Adventures of Frank Race. Join Frank Race for the Enoch Arden Adventure. It was one of those places that features music, not only for atmosphere, but also to drown out the cries of the patrons when they get their checks. Mine was a mellow mood. I expected to be joined at any moment by a creature both feminine and luring. So I was settling myself for a gentle and interesting evening when... But I cannot Hey, Ray, tell these guys you know me, will you? Now, don't make a scene, Henri. Let the gentleman in. There, you see, wise guy. Wise guy. Well, what's the pitch, Mark? I got a dame in a cab. She wants to see you. Why didn't you come in? She's supposed to meet me here. Huh? You expect a dame? Well, you don't think I'd go white tie and get down alone, do you? Uh, I got me a feel and a dame in my cab ain't the one you're expecting. Blonde, statuesque, rather beautiful. Uh-uh. Redhead. Stacked. Completely a pip. That good? Mm-mm. All right, you sold me. Henri. Uh, you wish something, Monsieur Ray? Yeah, there'll be a lady seeking me. I've, um, I've been taken suddenly ill. Eh? You'll make it convincing, hmm? Oh, but of course, Monsieur Ray. You are dying. Steal a phrase from Mark. The lady in the cab was a pip. I had a look at her while lighting a cigarette. I held a match until it almost burned my fingers. Then I sat back to await developments. I'm Hillary Stewart. I have a personal problem that I think you could help me with, Race. A matter of insurance. The policy is for half a million dollars. Something tells me the insurance is on your husband's life. Yes. And at the moment he's alive? I don't know. You see, Race, I'm, I'm 26 years old. I was married eight years ago. Almost seven years ago, my husband disappeared. Disappeared? Disappeared. Police had the case. There was a lot of publicity and... Oh, yes, yes, I remember. Martin Stewart, senior partner in the importing firm of Stewart Ronick, wasn't he? That's right. And in this state, when a person's been missing for seven years... He they... may be declared legally dead under the Enoch Garden law, which would make that little insurance policy of yours payable. Cover ground quickly, Mr. Ray. Well, half a million dollars, I'm afraid I can't see where you'd have any problem. Do you think the insurance company will be inclined to pay all that money without investigation? No. I think they'll investigate all over the place. But if everything's above board. Suppose they were to find that my husband had been murdered. Well, that would be important only if you murdered him. Did it? That's what I mean. That's why I want you to look into the affair. For my protection. Will you take the case? Have dinner with me. It calls me a little. I'd like that, but I can't. Not tonight. Tomorrow, perhaps? Let's drop it, perhaps. All right. And now, if I could be transferred to another cab, I must go home. Well, we'll take you home. Where to? Sumter Terrace, 1450. <laughs> Sumter Terrace is an exclusive district. One of those streets where tall, thin trees line the curb and short, fat women parade their dogs. There was a man standing before the entrance to number 1450 as I escorted Hillary Stewart up the steps. She spoke to him. Hello, Gary. I'm sorry I'm late. I've been waiting an hour. I'm truly sorry. I'll go in and get ready right away. Thanks a lot, Mr. Race. If you'll call for me... Tomorrow. I'll remember. I watched her go into the building, then I turned toward Mark and the cab. But I didn't go toward them. 
Gary was there on the steps, blocking the way to the street. Stay away from her, understand? Now you're making me very sad. It's practically an engraved invitation to come back. Yeah? And what's this? Punch nailed me to the wall of the building. His outline danced in front of me as I fought to breathe, to stay upright. I was conscious of his grinning at me, an ugly grin. Then he pulled the door open and went inside. Hey! Hey, what went on there? What, uh, what goes on, Ray Shark? Well, just embarrassed, Mark. You know, I'll be all right. A uh, second. I thought I saw him throw a snake punch at 30. Low down, no good. What are you slugging? Well, I digest my food. I went inside. I'll go in and beat his brain. No, not now, Mark. I can take care of myself. I have an idea we'll be seeing him again. The enforced soup diet that Gary had thrust upon me was wearing on my nerves for the next evening. My appetite was back in working order and my spirits were high, but the housekeeper who answered the door at the residence of Hillary Stewart sent them into a nosedive. I don't understand it, sir. She left no messages. You have no idea where she can be reached, huh? Well, she took a plane last night to Europe. Europe? Last night? Yes, sir. To Zurich, Switzerland. Perhaps you could write to her there at the Hotel Metropole. All right. Well, I suppose you have any idea of why she went there. Well, Mr. Stewart, God rest him, used to have a branch of his company there. I think uh, Mr. Romick, his partner, works from there now. I take it you've been with Mrs. Stewart for some time? Oh, yes, sir. I was Mr. Stewart's housekeeper for ten years before he married her. I understand he disappeared not long after the wedding. Yes. Happened right here in this very room. It was a Sunday afternoon. I was listening to the radio. And then the news came over that Pearl Harbor had been bombed. Mr. Stewart. He didn't say a word. Got up and walked out of the house, and we never saw him or, or heard of him again. Hmm. Well, thank you. Thank you very much. With Hillary Stewart running out on me, my first reaction was an impulse to flip the whole thing. I can do without women to play games, even glamorous redheads. But I thought of her playmate Gary and that sneak punch and decided that I had to see that boy again. The way he'd acted made me certain I'd find him wherever I'd find Hillary. I played a hunch. I went into a phone booth and called several of the bigger life insurance companies. And I hit the jackpot when I spoke to Steve Watson, vice president in charge of claims at Columbia Life Plan. Yes, Race, we issued the policy on Stewart's life. Why? I just think the claim's a little fuzzy. Huh? I'd check some more before paying off. You'd have told me that a little bit sooner. The claim was paid off in full yesterday. Yesterday? That's right. And she'd already collected all her money. Hmm? Was that right? Um, nothing, nothing, Steve. Wait a minute. You got something on your mind. Spill it. Hey, look, Steve, let me throw you a proposition. I think that claim's off base. Let me look into it. And if I come up with something, I'm working for you. And if I fail, I'm on my own. That's the deal. Where can I reach you? Make it care of American Express, Zurich, Switzerland. Switzerland, land of peace and comparative plenty, nestling in the heart of a war-torn and starving continent. Setting down on the runway of the Zurich airport was different from most European landings. There were no bomb-shattered buildings, no rubble-choked streets. Mark and I smudged the register at the hotel Metropole. I found Hillary Stewart's name in the book, but she wasn't in, so I left Mark at the hotel and located the office of Stuart Romick. Guten Tag. Hey, guten Tag. I'm looking for a... Uh, oh, uh, ich bin... <laughs> An American. Well, don't <laughs> struggle with the lingo, pal. Let's just talk United States. Oh, gladly. Now, I always have trouble with my umlauts. <laughs> <laughs> so do I. Hey, where are you from? New York. Ah, no place like it. Hey, I used to play ball for the Dodgers. Mm. Two years with them before Uncle Robbie traded me. Third base. Yeah, the hot corner. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, that was a long time ago. Uh, what'd you say your name was? Frank Race. Mm. And uh, I'm looking for a young lady I think you may know. Hillary Stewart. Why, 
Sure I do. I was her husband's partner. I'm Pete Romick, and you're in luck. Hillary's in the other office. Came in a few minutes ago. Come on. Hillary was sitting beside a desk, sipping hot chocolate. There was no flicker of surprise in her eyes when she saw me. We were still playing a game, and she was winning. Because I could see that she had been expecting me. Behind the desk sat a dark-skinned man who might have been from the Mediterranean area. I had a feeling that at home he'd have been wearing a turban. He was introduced as Sutra Heyman, manager of the office. You have just arrived in Switzerland, Mr. Rice? A few hours ago. Enjoy a pleasant voyage? Enjoyed a fast flight. You must have, Rice. Faster than I expect. Ah, but you did expect. You know, we never quite finished that chat we started in New York. And our dinner dates might result in a case of malnutrition for me. <laughs> Forgive me, Race, and I'll make it up to you this very evening. There's a quaint place just on the outskirts of town, the Doris. Let's meet there, um, say at eight. Fine. Eight o'clock it is. The Doris is the kind of place you dream about. It had all the old world charm, along with candlelight and exquisite linen and fine old silver. At least did something extra for Hillary's eyes. And it was difficult not to forget that this lovely creature was a very dangerous companion. Oh, oh I'm enjoying this enormously, Rach. It's the sort of place I'd enjoy spending every evening with someone like you, after I get the insurance money. Well, you must be suffering from amnesia, child. You've already received the money. You can put away that fetching stare, Ducky. Got my information from the insurance company. All right, Rach. I guess I should have given you my confidence in the first place. And listen. I engaged you, Rach. Because I'm afraid. Of what? Being murdered. For whom? Gary? Romick? Eamon? I don't know. Perhaps my husband. Perhaps he really isn't dead. Oh, Rafe, I'm a coward, and the money only gives me more to fear. You're not silly enough to be carting half a million dollars around with you. No. No, I cashed the check, but I put the money in one of those rental lockers that look out of your field before I came over. Here. Here's the key that opens that locker, Rafe. I want you to keep it for me. You want me to keep it? I don't know why, but I'm convinced that getting rid of this key is my only chance of staying alive. Oh, that's a very sweet thought. Now we can stop worrying about you, but uh, what about me? We'll return to the adventures of Frank Race in just about one minute. Back to the adventures of Frank Race. I waited for somebody to make a play, but nothing came. Until I got an invitation from Sutra Heyman to take part in some winter sport at a chalet he owned above snow line. Inside the chalet, there was a roaring fire in every room. Romick was there, and so was Gary and a few other people I didn't know. But Heyman didn't bother with introductions. He showed me up to my room, and he came in, too. Closed the door. There is a small balcony outside the window, Mr. Rice. But do not become overly enthusiastic about the view. There is a sheer drop of almost 1,000 feet. You didn't come in to tell me that. Merely polite conversation. A prelude to more important things. What's on your mind? Hillary Stewart. In what way? I'm in love with her. I want you to leave her alone. You invited us up here to spend the weekend together. Lot in planning. I have several plans. Some of them pleasant. And the others? Most unpleasant. They do not come within a thousand feet of being pleasant. What do you want? The girl or the money? Because if it's the money, you have to deal with me. What do you mean? Stuart's insurance. Half a million dollars. It's locked up, and I've got the only key to it. Then you are not interested in Hillary. No, mm -hmm. Casual sort of way. Many man would be. Gary's the lad you better keep the eye on. Gary works for me. It was his job to keep other men away from her. Oh, so that's it. 
You brace yourself for a shock, Hammond. Your muscle man has fallen in love with his work. Gary, you are joking. It's no joke, Hammond. He'll kill anybody who tries to take her away from him, including you. <laughs> After planting the seed of doubt within Heyman, I went to bed. But I was restive. With that thousand-foot drop outside the window, I felt like a flagpole sitter the day before he breaks the record. It was with sleepy delight that I found myself alive in the morning. But the sleepiness wore off with tobogganing and skiing and the inevitable snow fight. <laughs> Ouch! Whoa! Oh, that Watch him race! He's putting chunks of ice on them. <laughs> When I was a kid, we used to use coal. I'll even it up with you. With this one. Oh, oh nice work, Rami. <laughs> Why, you want to get on my right side, will you? You're blocking my swing. Oh, sorry. I forgot you were a southpaw. Oh, oh there's Hammond in the open. Let him have it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that is enough. I swear to God. Me too. Uh, I'm the only undamaged target left. Oh, just when I was getting the range. Oh, well... <laughs> Look, uh, there's a car coming up the road. Yes, I think it's a friend of mine. Oh. I'll go meet him. Oh. It's Mark, all right, in a battered cab that a New York hacky wouldn't have taken into the Catskills. I told the cab driver to wait, and I dragged the protesting Mark up to my room. What's the matter with you? What'd you tell him to wait for? Because he's going right back with him. How about the cables? Oh, yeah, yeah. Uh, bad news. The insurance company got in touch with the police, like you said, and they opened that lock at LaGuardia, but the loot was gone. Gone? Are you sure, Mark? Empty as a horse player's pocket here. Read it yourself. Hmm. How about Rummy? Uh, two years with the Dodgers, all right. Third base, like you told him. Batted a lousy 212, but he was okay in the field. Still, a southpaw third baseman is a bit unusual. What are you talking about? Rummy ain't no southpaw. Just says he was a right-hander. Good boy, Mark. That's what I wanted. Then I don't have to go back down with that nut? Oh, more than ever. You're going to Paris. Paris? Why don't you say so? I'll slide down a hill on my nose. There's a Columbia Life Plan office on the Rue de la Paix. Get to the man in charge and tell him I sent you. Check. Rue de la Paix. Check. Tell him to contact every major insurance company on the continent and find out if any of them have ever paid a claim on the life of Pete or Peter Romick. Uh, he ain't dead. He may be. This Romick's an imposter. Yeah, and one more thing. Yeah? I think Hillary brought the money over here with her. Mm -hmm. Half a million shouldn't be too hard to face. Have all the foreign exchange branches of the banks checked to see if any private individual has had large sums of American currency exchanged for francs or British pounds, any European currency. Consider that I have done it. And we'll be back with the info in a couple of days. Mm. Well, wait a couple of days, I'll be as cold as yon mountain peak. Heyman has a phone hidden in his den. I spotted the wires. Now, you stay at the Columbia Life Plan office when you get that information. Uh -huh. Make them keep the place open all night if you have to. And I'll slip down during the night and phone you from here. <laughs> I will persuade them to stay open with me and Ranch. I had less time than I thought. It was in their eyes at lunch. There was a lot of nervous tension around that table. Another very obvious thing was that all the other guests, with the exception of Hillary, Romick, Gary, and, of course, Hammond, had suddenly left for other places and other companies. You are not eating well, Race. I should think the sports would sharpen your appetite. He goes on diet sometimes. He loves soup. Well, I'm not much of a lunch hound. Neither is Hillary. Maybe we need more exercise. More? I think I'd like that. Excuse us? Of course. Mm -hmm. Sure. The snow was beautiful. And deadly. Deadly because you left a trail behind you with every step. No use trying to hide. There was no place to hide. Hillary knew it, too, because... Race. Oh, Race. Hey, hey, take it easy. Hey, hold me, Race. I'm frightened. One of them's going to kill me. Why, you? I've got the key. This is no time to argue the point, because unless I'm mistaken, there's a man on that far slope. And he has a rifle with a telescopic sight. Ow! Get down. Where is he? Never mind. Do as I tell you. Crawl this way, but keep low. Oh, Race, we can't go any further. There's a drop here. Oh, God, there's a slight slope. If it isn't too sure, we may make it. Hold on to me now and relax. We're going to go bobsledding without a bobsled. No, Race! No! We hit the bottom. It was touch and go, but it was a little extra distance on our side. 
But we had to keep moving. At least we had darkness to cover. Then we rested, but not for long. I was trying to figure out a way to work back to the house and keep my telephone rendezvous with Mark when... Race. Race, look. Oh, following the trail with torches. Tenacious, aren't they? It's only two lights, though. Hmm. Somebody isn't playing. Race, you can hear me! Don't answer him. Well, thanks for the advice. Think I like to play clay pigeon? Answer me, Race, or I shall have your friend call you. You don't think I let him get back to Zurich, do you? He's got Mark. Your friend wants you to join us here. I will let him tell you. Don't be a sucker, Race! Keep going! Uh, you... I'm sorry, Hillary. All right, Hammond, Gary. You convinced me. Bargain with them, Race. They want the key. Very pertinent suggestion. Yeah, listen, Heyman. Before I make a target of myself, remember, I'm the only one who knows where that key is. I am aware of that race. Lead me to it. Then Gary will hold you and your friend for 48 hours, after which you will be released. Get lost, Race! Get lost! All right, Heyman, but make Gary lay off. You can stop him by walking toward our torches. Here we come. We walked to the lights. Poor Mark. It looked like he'd gone 40 rounds with Dempsey. His eyes swollen, half closed. Oh. What'd you have to give up for? Perhaps to fight another day, boy. All right, Heyman. Shall we march? An excellent suggestion. The scout troop seems to be short a member of the... Eager Beaver Patrol. Rummick? No. No, the man who posed as Rummick. Oh, <laughs> you are very clever, Race. The real Rummick is dead, of course, as you surmise. How about the fake Rummick? He is dead, too, Race. You see, he went up to search your room, and he found part of the cablegram you tried to burn. The information about the real Rummick. He, he was very excited. He wanted to find you and confide in you, I think. But in his excitement, he fell from the balcony. Well, that's convenient. Only two of you to split the money now. Maybe how are you going to split the uh, Hillary? What do you mean, Race? Well, Heyman was in a tender and confiding mood yesterday. He loves the lady. That uh, makes you rivals, doesn't it? Heyman? He's needling you, you fool. If you can convince him of that, Heyman, you're dumber than I thought. I'm smart enough to make sure. Drop your gun, Heyman, and walk with the rest. This is earlier than I had planned this, Gary. But you had to be eliminated sooner or later. <laughs> oh, careful, Ray. Right now I knew you'd be a sucker, Gary. Leave hold me. Now, I'll take that. Don't shoot, Race. Please. Don't worry. I'm not the type. How do you feel, Mark? Oh, rocky. Oh, that's too bad. I thought you might want to... Try the score with Gary. Uh -huh. Oh. Huh. I get it. Hey, for that, I'm in a pink. Uh -huh. I got one good round uh -huh. in me, and that's just about all it's going to take. Uh, now, listen. No, I, you I, listen. I, You're a very lucky guy that I ain't got my hand <laughs> What do you know? Boy, look at all that ocean under us, will you? <laughs> well, I'd be glad to see New York again. Hey, what do you suppose them Swiss guys will do to that Gary? They murdered Heyman. They have laws. Good one. You saved my life, Race. I'm very grateful. You'll pay for it. Of course. I'll pay you well. Are you sure the insurance company will close the case when we've told them everything? When we've told them everything, Yes. And as soon as they locate and attach the money, wherever you banked it in Europe. But I don't understand. And you've yet to be tried for being an accessory to your husband's murder. <gasps> Holy smokes, Race, what are you... You made a big mistake, Hillary. You were the only one who knew the money wasn't in the locker. Or Heyman would have shot me on sight without trying to get the key. That's not true, Race. Oh, yes, it is, Ducky. You were all in it together, you, Heyman, and the others. Heyman was easy to tag, too. You know, the manager of a branch office of a bankrupt firm wouldn't own a Swiss chalet. 
and equipped with servants, unless he had private means, like the money from Ronick's insurance. That doesn't mean that I had it any... It means you were greedy, Ducky. You didn't want Heyman to cut in on your hands, did you? But, Ray, why would I have called you in if I had anything yes, to... Yes, just so you could ask that very question. You knew that I would be the perfect alibi in the eyes of the insurance company. It would have worked, too, beautifully, if you hadn't taken that money out of the locker. You're not going to send me to prison, Race. Never! Never! Race, she's getting away! <laughs> 20,000 feet with all that ocean down there? Relax, Mark. She isn't going far. <laughs> Frank Race starring Tom Collins with Tony Barrett as Mark Dollins with Tony Barrett as Mark Dollins. Others heard in tonight's cast were Michael Ann Barrett, Tom Holland, Charlie Lung. This series is written and directed by Joel Murcott and Buckley Angel. The music is composed and played by Ivan Dittmars. Be sure to be with us again this same time next week for another dramatic chapter in The Adventures of Frank Race. Art Gilmore speaking. This is a Bruce Ells production.